He triggered the rear guns once more. A direct hit. The blue car skidded as the driver lost control, then flipped and caught fire. That would teach him not to tailgate. The year is 2040, and it's the freeway of the future, where the right of way goes to the biggest guns. Car Wars Classic is back, and I'm going to do a deep dive into this classic game. Coming right up on RPG Retro Reviews. everyone, I'm Captain Courageous and I review old school modules and games and try to give them a fun and informative analysis. This week I'm taking a look at a board game RPG crossover classic, Car Wars, a sci-fi dystopian future combat simulation game where duels with automobiles is common. Heavenly inspired by movies such as The Road Warrior Mad Max, Death Race 2000, James Bond, the short story Why Johnny Can't Speed by Alan Dean Foster, and Harlan Ellison's 1969 short story classic Along the Scenic Route. This is a classic game from Steve Jackson Games. In this video, I'm going to cover the game's history, the play of the game, we'll go down the rabbit hole of Car Wars expansions and add-ons, we will take a brief look at the sixth edition of the game, but mainly I'll be talking about the original classic pocket box edition of the game. On a personal note, this is one of my all-time favorite games. The very first hobby game I ever got into was Starfleet Battles, a sci-fi tactical board game based on original series Star Trek, written by Stephen V. Cole from the Amarillo Design Bureau. Not long after that, my friends and I dived headlong into Dungeons & Dragons 1st Edition. Car Wars was another one of those games that filtered through our group and quickly became a mainstay, and for good reason. When it was first published in 1980, it was a pocket game in a small Ziploc bag, but by the time I got into it, Car Wars came in a little plastic black box, still pocket-sized, and sold for only $5.50. At the time, pocket games were somewhat popular, and a few were amazingly good. Starfleet Battles, for example, started off as a pocket game, and it was, of course, amazing. But typically, pocket games were one-offs you got because they were cheap, played them once or twice, and moved on. Car Wars was very, very different, and it also shared some design elements with Starfleet Battles. The phased movement and car displays were reminiscent of the impulse movement and ship systems displays from that game. And this small package was a serious tactical board game with heavy role-playing elements and nearly unlimited options for player-created vehicles and arena designs. The good news is that after a very successful Kickstarter, all the Pocket Box Edition games of the 80s are back in print, including classic Car Wars. And I can do a legitimate unboxing for you of the original components. You can pick this classic up along with many others on Steve Jackson's web store, but Steve Jackson also has a full store presence on Amazon, which is where I got mine for just $19.99. This particular box is the same size as the 1980s original, but is a bit thicker so you can store more stuff. As you can see, this is a full-on complete replica. Check out the artwork front and back. This reprint includes dice, unlike the original, and they are pretty neat in that they have the Steve Jackson game Illuminati logo printed where the number one usually goes. The game's components consist of the 24-page rulebook, a massive fold-out that includes game charts and four highway sections, two of which are double-sided with debris printed on one side, where the duels take place. As a bonus, this reprint includes a neat little mini notebook, a small Ziploc for the counters, and an official AADA membership card. That's the American Auto Duel Association. There's the counter sheets for the cars, and this reprint is awesome in that it comes with the original single cardstock counter sheet and two die cut counter sheets. Very handy as a time saver 
And that's about it. While four highway sections for a board game may not seem like much, typically you would just move one sheet along the way as play progressed. Of course, given the components were just printed in black and white, it was easy enough to go to the local library. In the 1980s, there weren't really that many office stores. If you wanted to photocopy something, you went to the library. So you'd go to the library, and for 15 cents, you could make as many highway sections as you needed. As you can see here, the fold-out sheet is pretty large, but it's meant to be cut up into smaller sections. And when you do that, you end up with the four road sections, vehicle design sheets, reference charts that include the crash tables, a movement tracker, and a listing of vehicle accessories. The gameplay is fast and chaotic and easy to understand, and games typically last from anywhere between 10 minutes to an hour or so, depending on the number of players. Usually in a single night, you could play out several scenarios, but that really wasn't the best part. The game includes very detailed car design rules that take into account the car's chassis, suspension, tires, power plant, weapons, armor, and the weight and handling of the car. Later expansions would add in many options. The popular Uncle Albert's catalog included numerous entries, not just for weapons, but for other components, including targeting computers, air dams and spoilers, ram plates, spike plates, and more. The catalog is written as a legitimate publication with frequently humorous entries for each component, and then the game design rules for the device and cost. Also of interest is the AADA Vehicle Guide, which lists not only all the cars for which counters are included in the original game, but uh, an additional 129 vehicle designs, more car options and rules for a then new vehicle type, the three-wheeler trike, and rules for off-road dueling. Players generally set up a purchase limit for their scenario they want to play and design cars based on that. Official dueling divisions for tournaments are divided up by cost in thousands of dollars. Division 5 vehicles are those costing $5,000 or less. Division 10 vehicles are those costing $10,000 or less. And so on up to $50,000 or more. To make things even more interesting, players could also create their driver using a very basic but effective character creation system. In general, players are concerned with their character's driving skill, their gunnery skill, and their prestige. Surviving car duels, either some random scenario on the highway or better yet an officially sanctioned arena event allows the driver to gain skill points to improve their character. Another part of the fun of Car Wars is creating a driver and having them move up the ranks in the lower divisions, winning money and prestige along the way. The core starting scenario is called Amateur Night. In this scenario, the arena provides the vehicles, low cost Division 5 cars, and those brave or stupid enough to try their luck have the potential to win cash prizes and that allow them to build more effective cars, travel the country from arena event to arena event for an ever-increasing cash purse and prestige. This is where the character and campaign elements of Car Wars comes in, and just like any role-playing game, the gaming group can have a referee who designs the scenarios and runs the events. In addition to keeping track of movement phases and a lot of the bookkeeping elements of a game and making ruling on the rules, a referee can act as the arena announcer, giving an amusing play-by-play -play as the chaos of the event unfolds. So much fun. Not a bad little game for just $5.50, huh? There are many expansions for this game, far too numerous to mention here, but some of the primary expansions include Truck Stop, which added rules for using and designing semi-trucks, and Sunday Drivers, later renamed to Crash City, that added more rules for pedestrians. Crash City is basically one big role-playing scenario pack. It includes a massive fold-out map of the city of Midville, background information, and three starting scenarios. Like the original Car Wars game, Truck Stop and Crash City came in small black storage boxes. Smaller expansions added more road sections, more counters, and included arena maps, such as this one here, expansion set number 5, Double Arena, which, as the name implies, includes massive maps for two full arenas, rules, and scenarios for the Dumbarton Slalom Arena, known by fans everywhere as the Dumbbell,
and the Buffalo Municipal Coliseum. Of course, as time went on, there were rules, upgrades, and compendiums. The pocket game expanded to a full-on box set, Car Wars Deluxe, and the Car Wars Compendium rules. Further additions would include rules for boats, hovercraft, and even helicopters. The Steve Jackson role-playing game GURPS would get its own compatible supplement, AutoDuel. The world of Car Wars is vast, but a wonderful gamer rabbit hole to go down. And given the low cost of each supplement, usually around $10, it was very affordable to expand your game. So let's do a relatively brief overview of the rules. Overall, the core rules of the game haven't changed that much over the years, though there have been quite a few expansions, addendums, clarifications, and the like. But for this overview, and to keep things brief, I'm going to reference the original 24-page rules booklet from the Car Wars Pocket Edition. When initially learning the game, it is best to start off with low-cost stock vehicles. Once you know how the game is played, you're going to want to dive into the vehicle built rules. Gameplay starts off with a 1d6 reflex roll for each driver. This can give you an edge during combat and improve your handling of the car. Next rules give you a look at what a typical vehicle record sheet looks like using the stock hotshot car, which costs $14,600. This is one of my favorite cars. It includes two linked forward firing machine guns and four flameflowers, one firing right, one firing left, and two linked firing in the back. A link is simply a $50 accessory that allows the driver to fire two weapons at once. Here you can see the car has a super power plant and the driver with three life points seated in the middle. With only three life points, Car Wars characters die easily. Fortunately, the Uncle Albert's catalog includes body armor, which adds an additional three life points to the character. The weapon diagram shows how many damage points it can take before becoming inoperable, its direction of fire, and number of shots, or ammo. The armor positions are front, back, left, right, top, and underbody. The road sections have a scale of 1 inch equals 15 feet, with 4 smaller blocks representing 3.75 feet each. This handy scale allows players to use regular old graph paper to design their own arenas and road sections. A turn is divided up into 10 phases of 1 tenth of a second, thus each game term represents 1 second of real time. Acceleration for vehicles is determined by its weight and power plant and can be between 5 and 15 miles per hour. Deceleration is a straight 10 miles per hour, but it's possible to decelerate faster, but faster deceleration becomes riskier the more you want to slow down. Anytime you try to maneuver in the game or encounter a road hazard, it's assigned a difficulty, or D. At the start of the turn, your car begins with its base handling class set to its starting level, usually 3, but depending on the car's suspension, it could be a 2. Driver skill and your reflex roll can also start the handling as high as 5. The game lists a variety of possible maneuvers a driver can try and its difficulty. As the turn progresses, the status of the car's handling decreases accordingly. The effects of such are made clear by the control table chart. As you can see, the car's speed determines just how dangerous a low handling rating can be. When a number appears in the handling chart, you have to make a 1d6 roll and attempt to roll that number or higher. If you fail, you go to one of the two crash tables depending on whether the failure was due to debris or a maneuver. Either way, going to the crash table is to be avoided. Results include anything from a trivial skid to a full-on roll of your car. Unless the car has a gunner, which take up an additional weight and space, a driver may only fire once per game turn. Further, each weapon can only fire once per game turn. Thus, in general, each vehicle will only fire once per turn. To make an attack, first determine what arc the target is in. This will determine what weapon you can fire and from what side, and thus what side armor of the car you're hitting. Each weapon lists a base to hit roll. Roll two dice. Modify the attack for range, hazards, road conditions, and the gunnery skill of the fire. 
and if the result is equal to or greater than the t hit of the weapon, damage has been scored. Each weapon lists how much damage it does and other effects. For example, a flamethrower can't target a vehicle more than 10 inches away, and it always produces a smoke screen when fired. Play with generally continues until one car is destroyed, can't move, drives off the arena, leaves the scene of the combat, or the driver is killed. Given the sheer volume of sets and expansions available for Car Wars, if this sounds like something you might be interested in playing, at this moment you just might be asking, well, Captain Courageous, where is the best place to start? I'm glad you asked that question. Unequivocally, spending the $20 to get the Car Wars Pocket Box is a must. Not only will you get the cool box to hold your stuff, but you'll get a nice starter pack of the game, which will give you enough information to decide if this is your kind of game and at a very reasonable price. Plus, the die-cut counters will save you a ton of time over cutting everything apart using scissors. Next, you might want to hop on over to Drive Through RPG and pick up the Car Wars Classic version of the rules for just $6. Not only will you get printable counters and road sections, but you'll get the latest version of the rules updated in 2015. As opposed to 24 pages, these rules are 64 pages long and include the errata, better collision rules, and overall the rules are clarified and better explained, and that 10-phase combat round is shortened to 5 phases, speeding up play considerably. These rules are ready to be booklet printed, and as you can see here, they turned out pretty nice for me. Of course, I made this cover myself, and if you want to see how I do booklet printing, I did a step-by-step -step instruction guide on this a few years ago, so check the description or the link in the corner. Now, if you end up liking this game, let me recommend Uncle Albert's Auto Stop and Gunnery Shop. 2035 catalog for an amusing and functional game accessory that lists all the weapons and accessories from the basic rules and a ton of additional weapons and options. This is really a must have for any real Car Wars fan. Also, the AADA vehicle guide lists 120 different vehicle builds, another must have. As far as expansions go, expansion one includes the legendary Armadillo Auto Duel Arena mentioned in the rules, and crashed versions of all the car counters that come in the original game. Expansion set 5 is great. It comes with these two massive arenas, the Dumb Barton Slalom and the Buffalo Municipal Coliseum, and a bunch of arena car counters. The included scenarios are all great, especially if you have a referee to activate the Coliseum's random weaponry. After that, Truck Stop and Crash City are also must-haves. All of that combined would run you about $90 and you'd have enough material to keep you playing for years. But that's what I think. How about you? What are your must-have Car Wars supplements, expansions, and rules options? The Deluxe Editions are really optional in my opinion and add in a bunch of things I personally have little care about, such as hovercraft, boats, and helicopters. I just want to fight with the cars. Um, also, check out uh, Drive Through RPG. There are a ton of expansions available for just three or four dollars, and you can just print your own road sections and make up all kinds of track sets. Of course, there's Warehouse 23, which offers a ton of free downloads, including turnkeys, some of them resized to different scales, so you can play Car Wars using Hot Wheels, for example. Painting and modifying Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars with turrets and machine guns in the style of Mad Max vehicles is a whole secondary hobby in and of itself. And as I said, this game is one great gamer rabbit hole. You can also get creative and make your own auto duel arenas with graph paper, which is, in my opinion, another one of the charms of this game. Car Wars is that rare gem of a game where the things that you do when not playing it are as much fun as actually playing the game. Let me also take a moment to direct you to the Combat Garage website. Here you can quickly design just about any kind of Car Wars vehicle you like with components from the Deluxe Editions on up, and then print out a car diagram and cost worksheet, reducing the time for car construction significantly. Note also all the classic designs from the core rules all are available as well to download 
it's free, so check it out. Which brings me to a discussion about car construction. Without a doubt, Car Wars vehicle construction is fairly complex and a bit math intensive, but it's all basic math. It's the main draw of the game, in my opinion. In other games, through repeated encounters, you tend to get familiar with your opponent's capabilities and then make tactical decisions based on that knowledge. In Car Wars, players have a ton of options at their disposal. How fast and how agile and how much damage their car can deal and take are unknowns just about every time you play. That surprise when you get too close and realize there's a single heavy rocket coming your way, that's what makes Car Wars so much fun. This is another thing ripe for discussion in the comment section. I'd love to hear about your favorite original car designs, arena designs, and stories about your favorite drivers and games. Given modern printing techniques, you no longer have to wait to run down to the library to get your photocopies. You can make them right at home. I made this three-fold road section just so I'd have something to fit into that cool new pocket box I just purchased. Two of these are really all you need for a great auto duel on the highway. I made these handy steering wheel speed and handling trackers. Clips are inexpensive plastic paper clips I found on Amazon. If you're a patron of the channel, all my custom Car Wars material is available for download and there are a ton of great Car Wars links in the description for all the things I've talked about in this video. Let me briefly talk about the sixth edition of the game. I do not own this game, and it seems unlikely I ever will, but I'll never say never. While clearly Steve Jackson Games put a lot of time and effort into its production and reimagining of the game with easier to use components and faster gameplay, at the risk of sounding like a grumpy old grognard, it seems like the raw seat of your pants aspect of the game is lost. Car Wars at its core was a pencil and paper game. It used counters and paper map sheets that were inexpensive to purchase or fun to draw yourself. Vehicle construction was done with the design, sheet, pencil, a calculator, and your imagination. Getting into the game was super easy and it was very accessible not only in price, but the gameplay area of the road sections meant your basic dining table was the perfect play area. Now entry level for just two players is around $60 with the deluxe set at $150. With $50 neoprene map sheets, the price alone will keep many gamers from trying it. And the need for a larger player area and the card packs for vehicle construction, it all looks very cool. But considering that back in the day for $5.50 and a few sheets of graph paper, me and five of my good friends could just have fun around the table in a cool arena duel. It seems a bit much. And for now, it's just not for me. So let's go ahead and take a look at Car Wars on my D20 scale of style presentation and value. Style wise this game exudes it not so much in the artwork which is actually pretty good but the heart of the game is in the slick tongue in cheek writing. The backstory of the game the sci-fi dystopia satire is so subtly politically subversive and at the same time deviously humorous. For example, the fact that the first official auto duel arena was built into an abandoned shopping mall is both hilarious and in retrospect here in 22 with so many abandoned shopping malls across the country is a startlingly accurate future prediction. The dark dystopia humor pervades the rules in a very tongue and cheek way in every supplement and never seems completely off the of rails. Uncle Albert's catalog is a prime example or the dumb Barton slalom arena known as the dumbbell to fans everywhere. The game feels alive and real. It hits the right notes. The actual gameplay is relatively smooth, but isn't without issues. The collision rules are a bit clunky, and some probably don't have the patience for the vehicle construction rules. But even with those little drawbacks, the game still plays fast and is a lot of fun. I'm going to rate this one an 18. As far as presentation goes, the rules are very well explained and straightforward. Even some of the more complex aspects of the game, such as vehicle construction, are easily understood in practice. Looking at the Pocket Edition, it's amazing what's included even at the new $19.99 price here in 2022. The production values are low, but in my humble opinion, 
this is one of those instances where low production values work in the game's favor and that the components are easily reproducible, especially with modern printers. You can make your own road sections and tracks with photo paper and heavy cardstock and a paper guillotine. You're in business. But even the reprints now available are still inexpensive with the expansion packets coming in at just $10. I'll rate this an 18 as well. So let's go ahead and talk value. If you love a fun, chaotic, fast play game with explosions, unpredictability, and dark dystopia humor, then Car Wars is a must have. And as I've already made clear, there are multiple ways to get into this game on a budget. This game for a nominal price can quickly start filling up a lot of your free time. So I have to rate the Car Wars classic game a natural 20. That brings my overall rating for Car Wars Classic to a 19. Amazing. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found this review fun, useful, and interesting. I'd like to take the time to thank all my patrons who make this channel what it is and these videos possible. Thank you so much. I know some of you are still looking for my review of Call of Cthulhu Mansions of Madness Volume 1 and it's definitely in the works. I just had so much completed material in the Car Wars video, I just had a lot of fun making it. So next week, I'll have the uh, Mansions of Madness out for you. I've dropped my first YouTube short talking about the new Hero Quest Rogue class, so please check that out. Please give this video a like, comment, and share. Please check out my Teespring store. Great gaming swag, t-shirts, carry bags, coffee cups, and more. Join the channel's Facebook page, RPG Retro Reviews, and consider supporting the channel by becoming a patron yourself, or alternatively, you can just send a tip through the PayPal tip jar. Link is in the description. As always, my friends, may your D20 roll true. Game on.